saying too much more. We have a volunteer that's been part of our school, and any of you can do this. Any of you can get up in front of this crowd and speak because you do so much. But we have a volunteer that's been part of Zamorano before the school was even built. And so I would like that volunteer to share a little bit because, um, um, and it's not because he's old, he's very young. Maybe, maybe 36 at the most, you know? But um, he's been here for a long time and he keeps coming back and coming back and coming back through. Zamorano's only had five principals. And I've been a principal at two other schools and schools have a lot of different principals for various reasons. But when you come to Zamorano, you don't leave here. And unless somebody tries to pull me out of here, I don't plan on leaving until I retire. So he's been through five, and he doesn't go away. He keeps coming back and coming back. And that's a good thing. So I want to thank him, and I want to introduce to you Grandmaster Orange. age 13. 
13 until I was age 37. And that was when he passed away. <clears throat> now, one thing that I believe is that our children deserve all the good time that we can give them. They deserve it. And when I see you guys moving about to school, I don't have a chance to stop and, and, and talk to you personally, but I know you're making a difference. I'm a product of that difference. I'm a product. So I'm 64 years old now, and people who volunteered for me in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s made a real big difference in my life. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a product, a good product, and a good spokesperson for how volunteering really, really, really makes a difference. Now, as I am getting older, oh, incidentally, I got my Medicare card yesterday. Let's get it. <laughs>
color in there for that day. <laughs> Another one is, thank you. Beautiful picture on the front, picture of a dog. Dear Grandmaster Orange, thank you for coming to our classroom. I love that you taught about Black History Month. You're very inspirational to all of us. Thank you for sharing your dreams with us. I also really appreciate that you encourage people to do their best. Someone told you that you can't do something and you did it anyway. That was really cool. And finally, dear Grandmaster Orders, thank you for coming to our class and teaching us about MLK and Rosa Parks and presenting to our class. I appreciate your life stories. Wow. I told a story about being poor when I was a kid. And I had to take two, the last two letters away from poor because our family couldn't even resonate with that. We're just poor. <laughs> and during the class, and during many of my presentations, I took off one of my shoes and I drew a hole in the bottom of it because that's where the hole was in my shoe when I was a kid. And I had to stuff paper in it every day in order to walk to school. Now, I'm from Oklahoma City. Many times it rains, thunderstorms, tornadoes, and things like that. On the rainy days, of course, the paper got wet, my feet got wet, and I still had to go to class and try to learn. Some days it snowed. So not only did my feet get wet, my feet were cold when I got to school. And in spite of that, I still had to learn with freezing feet all day long, and then walk back home. Now, I didn't get to dress like this as a child. My mother's sister worked at a place in Oklahoma City. In those days, it was called the dump. And that's where people went to discard shoes, clothing, and that kind of thing. Fortunately, my mother's sister worked there because she'd call my mom and say, look, the people just came and threw away some things. You might come down and see if you, know, you can find something for the kids. So that's why I did my shopping for school. One time I found some shoes. Most importantly to me, they didn't have a hole in them. Had a cool design on them, and they were suede. Now, that's kind of back in the Elvis days, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I got those shoes, and they became my school shoes. I wore them every day, and I was really proud of them. But I noticed some of the kids were kind of snickering at me a little bit. And so I asked my best friend, his name was Michael Hyshaw, why are the kids laughing? And he said, you don't know? No, nope, I don't know. He said, the reason the kids are laughing at you is because you're wearing bowling shoes to school. <laughs> well, I didn't know what a bowling shoe was. I didn't know that I didn't know you wore a different shoe for bowling. As far as I was concerned, those were my school shoes. And I wore those shoes until they wore out. I still wish I had them so I could kind of show you those shoes. Anyway, I can go on and on and on. I'm getting this signal. <laughs> In closing. Please let me know that I really, 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 from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you, and I believe in paying forward. So if you ever see me over at the shopping center and I happen to be at Starbucks and you happen to be in line, tap me on the shoulder for that free cup of coffee. Thank you all so much. Once again, I want to thank Grandmaster Orange for his services on Ronald and once all of you for your services on Ronald. So give yourself a round of applause. Um, but I do want to add to your story. I was right beside you, a little bit fur further away, and I was taking pictures of the whole thing. I also had my radio call, ready to call the nurse in case they took you down. So I was like, but like he said, it's like showing some love because oh, each and every single day our kids need love. Um, beyond the academics, they need love. I know he had a similar story. I needed love. And love could be in the form of a high five coming to school. It could be a smile from a person. It could be a hello or good morning. That's what our kids need. Once they have that, anything's possible. Unlike Mr. Vera, who has this great story, my story is simple. I'm sitting in this position because I spent a lot of time in that office when I was a kid. That's just the honest truth. So I knew about the principal's office when I was in 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, and not because I was a bad student. 
is because I had a mother who raised me who said, you cannot come home without asking your teacher all the questions in the world. If you come home from school and you don't know how to do your math, and then she, she would always say, did you ask your teacher? And if I said no, I would, I would say no, I'd move and bob and move because <laughs> something was coming, you know? Because she believed that you have to do your very best and you have to try as hard as you can, and once you do that, everything's okay. So if I was able to come home and say I gave it 100%, she loved me up. If I came home and said I gave 20, 30, 40, 99%, that wasn't okay. So every single day, I was that student, and I didn't always do it the right way. Instead of just doing like this, I'd be like, <laughs> and so that kind of dirt the leaves. <laughs> and that was me. But if somebody like you would always see me sitting there in that hard blue chair and say, what are you doing here, young man? And speak to me and talk to me and say, hey, there's another way. Because as hard as she worked, she wasn't always able to be here all the time, but she was there enough for me to realize that this place they call, they call school is a very, very important place. So regardless of what you think you're doing or not doing, you are telling our kids, even the kids that aren't your children, that this is a very, very important place by your presence here. And like I said, I cannot thank you enough. I don't have enough money, prizes, or certificates to thank you, but I personally thank you from the bottom of my heart, and this entire school thanks you from the bottom of my heart, their hearts, because this was truly an amazing school, and I can truly say that after being at three different schools as a, vice, as a principal and another school as a vice principal, that we have something amazing here. So make sure you hold on to that, and make sure your students appreciate that, because it doesn't last forever. So once again, I thank you, and I thank you, Master Orange, for being here with us, and I'm gonna call on you, and I'm gonna tap on your shoulder until I come. All right, you guys ready for a wonderful show? Alright, okay, so as we have our first grade class coming in and setting, uh, getting set up,